Hi, we are here today with Muriel Anderson. Muriel is one of the world's most respected fingerstyle guitar players. So. <laughs> <laughs> she is also the founder of the Muriel Anderson All-Star Guitar Night, as well as the Music for Life Alliance. She performs internationally, she gives workshops, and she also has many instruction products available through Melbay Publications. So Muriel, did you actually start playing on the classical guitar? Oh no, a, a lot of people think that, but I started with folk and bluegrass, okay. and yeah, that was my, my real passion. And I uh, then went on to high school and joined the school jazz band. Uh -huh. And the only way to continue studying guitar in college at that time uh, was to study classical. Uh -huh. So now you can get a degree in bluegrass guitar, but oh. you couldn't then. <laughs> so I kind of reluctantly went into classical guitar and then discovered a whole new world and all these other uh, possibilities for technique and expression. Sure. So how long have you actually been composing music? I composed since age about three or four. Wow. Um, so before I you know, was really playing music, yeah. uh, I remember uh, my first song that I'd written, I'd, uh, I heard the doorbell ring. Uh -huh. And then I found those notes on the piano. Oh. So I was reaching like up to the piano. I yeah, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> up. And, uh, and then I wrote a song with words and everything uh, cool. uh, called Ding Dong, uh, of based course. On, the, uh, on the song of the doorbell. <laughs> Muriel, I also understand that you studied with Chet Atkins. What an invaluable experience that must have been for you. Right, that was really informally. I was taking mandolin lessons from Jethro Burns out okay. in Evanston, Illinois, mm -hmm. and I, I played this tune called Nola for, for Jethro, and, and he said, oh, well, you got to meet my brother-in-law. Huh. And it turns out that Jethro and Chet Atkins married identical twin sisters. Wow. And so the next time that Chet was in Chicago, the Chicago area where I was living, mm -hmm. Uh, the introduction was made, and then I started coming down to Nashville whenever possible and uh, seeing if I could coerce him into I giving bet. me a guitar lesson. <laughs> I bet. Now, it was your association with Ted Atkins that led to the Muriel Anderson All-Star Guitar Night, is that right? Yes, it was through the Ted Atkins Appreciation Society mm -hmm. convention. Uh, it's a group of, of people who meet, just really wonderful people who, who love Chet's music. Yeah. And after the convention, there were still a bunch of us around. And the NAMM show met the same time that particular okay. year. So there were other musicians, other guitarists wow. in for that. Yeah. So I said, well, let's just have a party. And we sat around the swimming pool and we played music for each other and with each other. And the best music happened I that bet, night of the, I whole, bet. the whole time. So the next year, uh, one of the guitarists asked, are you having your picking party again? <laughs> so I said, well, let's have it on stage. Yeah, there and you go. So uh, the amazing thing was we had just as much fun, and so did the audience. That's great. So that was the start of uh, now we play in front of you know, 1,000, 2,000 people. I see you have a harp guitar here. How would you go about tuning something like this? <laughs> well, this part is tuned just like a regular guitar. Okay. And so, um, and the bass notes, they just, I, I tune them just going down in a scale, mm -hmm. but you can tune them pretty much any way you want. If mm -hmm. I want an extra low D mm -hmm. in that key, I'll, I'll drop that one yeah. down. And this particular instrument is, uh, made a little bit smaller so it's actually tuned up a second even though I'm thinking okay. a D chord it's actually sounding as an E. Yeah. So I think of it as still thinking in D. And I asked uh, Mike Doolin, the builder, if he could make me some half step tuners. Oh. So if I want to change that from a C to a C sharp, there all I go. need to do is that. So it comes nice. from uh, the folk harps that have these tuners. Yeah, that's great. And this one is, is new. I haven't really started playing with these very much but look at that. I wow. have all these extra little twinkly strings. That's great. Well, Muriel, what was um, so difficult about learning the harp guitar versus a regular classical guitar? Well, it's not that much more difficult. You okay. just have to get used to this. This hand plays like a regular guitar. Okay. And then uh, get used to 
the fact that the thumb can stretch out here, which mm. is a motion that I don't do on a sure. regular guitar, so that I can play the first and uh, yeah. the, the very lowest of the sub basses uh -huh. really at the, at the same time. Uh, so I've, I've got this. I'm still trying to figure out how to work in this super trebles like this. It's lovely. <laughs> Thanks. I'd like to show you a, a cool technique that I use for the tune View from Space. I play it on the harp guitar and recorded it on harp guitar for the New World Flamenco CD, but it works equally well on a regular guitar. I'll uh, play it here with uh, my steel string guitar, and I've, the tune, the lick goes like this. The whole tune is based off of that technique. Now that sounds like a whole pile of harmonics, doesn't it? But the thing is only one out of every three notes is actually a harmonic. So what I do is I touch the 12th fret with my index finger, uh, just very lightly, exactly on that 12th fret line, and then pluck with the thumb. So that's the harmonic technique I use. Just lightly touching and pluck with the thumb. So it's this motion. And then the middle finger plays the third string normally, and the ring finger plays the second string. I'm fingering a D chord, but leaving the first string open with my left hand, by the way. So I've got that little set of three notes, harmonic, regular, regular. Now I go to the next set of notes, and I've got the harmonic on the next string over, the fourth string. And now I'm going to reverse that pattern and play the ring finger first, and then the middle. So I've got... It's a little bit more interesting there, reversing that. Uh, so I've got harmonic, note, note, harmonic, note, note. And then I go back to the regular, uh, the first technique, but starting on the third string. And here, this is the, the thing that you have to know. Uh, I'm moving up two frets because notice I'm fingering the second fret here with my left hand. And so uh, since I'm fingering two frets with my left hand, I, fing I go up two frets with my right hand. And I've got that harmonic. And that's the idea. Well, what future projects do you have in store? Well, the New World Flamenco CD is going so well. We're getting mm -hmm. a lot of radio yeah. play and uh, great, great response for it. So the, the first thing is we're, we're looking at doing another, uh, another New World Flamenco CD, you know, great. the next, uh, yeah. you know, the return of New World Flamenco. Sure. Um, and also uh, some more harp guitar projects, mm -hmm. uh, including a uh, duet CD with John Doan. Mm -hmm. We'll call it Harp Guitars Under the Stars. Well, Mariel, thank you so much for sharing with us today and inviting us into your beautiful home. It was a real pleasure. Oh, thank you for coming. <laughs> and uh, I'll serve you some tea now. Oh, okay. <laughs>